Welcome to Leadership DNA, a podcast for those who aspire to be a better leader. <clears throat> Alongside Arturo Gomez, I'm Rob Cressy. In today's topic, leading by example, and we've got another special guest joining us. And Arturo, I'm going to allow you to do the introduction. Perfect. Well, uh, it is with great pleasure that I get to introduce my, uh, my friend and acquaintance over the last 10 years, Chad Bronstein, who is currently the CEO and co-founder of Philo, which is a MarTech uh, company. So Chad, give us a little uh, introduction and tell us uh, what your day-to-day day -day life is like and a little yeah. bit about Philo. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Robin and Arturo. Uh, Arturo, we obviously go way back to the days of 10 years ago, me at Underground. So I uh, um, got to see both of us grow, which is great um, from that. But uh, so yeah, I started Philo about a year and a half ago, founded it. Um, when I was at a Moby, Arturo, which you knew me at, um, I decided I was going to go, wanted to start something new and be an entrepreneur again. And so I saw the opportunity to do something in cannabis. Um, and there was an opportunity that there really wasn't much technology in the space. And so I went and um, had the idea and then went around and brought some co-founders on with me. Um, Aristotle, you know him, his local Chicago guy, and Eric yeah. Shani, who was with me at a Moby, and really went out um, and started raising capital on the vision and uh we were able to raise 16 million dollars and i went around and um built a really amazing team um my show i think we'll talk about it later but uh philo wouldn't have been as successful as this today which it's a year and a half later we're 75 employees um we're in multiple markets israel la new york chicago denver um and we're growing because of the team that we built and kind of our mentality so um it's been fun it's exciting uh learn something new every day as an entrepreneur. But um, yeah, that's, that's in a nutshell. I, I've been in MarTech for 14 years, guys. Um, started at Conian, which is a small company by myself. And we grew it pretty, um, when I was in Chicago, we grew it pretty quickly with another entrepreneur, Kim. And, uh, you know, had a lot of success there and was ready to do it again. It's amazing. So, you know, I mentioned that you and I have known each other for, for about 10 years. About it was probably about three years ago. I, and you and I uh, spent some time together. I actually got a chance to, to see you interact. And as much as I knew you and respected your hustle and saw this passion and this hunger to be like a true entrepreneur, I actually had never had a chance to see you interact with your team, really. It, it was always yeah. kind of from the outside looking in. I got a really unique opportunity to actually see you interact with your team. And I think I left after those three days and it, I, I knew in, in my mind, I said, wow, t the, one of the reasons that Chad is so successful is because of his leadership style. I saw the way that you were interacting with your team, the respect level that they pushed back on, onto you. And just those are, the, that, those are the key ingredients to a formula, in my opinion, for, for real success. One of the questions that I have for you is, is who along the way or many or, or how many people or what people influenced your, your leadership style and, and who can you say, you know, may, may have had the greatest impact on you? That's a tough question. I think, you know, at the end of the day, I, I got, I had great parents that taught me a lot um, from that standpoint and uh, always pushed me to be a hustler um, and, a, and persistence and, you know, just, uh, but I think, you know, you have all these different, it's like you said, it's hard. I had wrestling, great wrestling coaches in the high school that taught me a lot. You know, I had, um, great parents. Uh, my wife taught me a lot. Like you see, you learn a lot from a lot of people. Um, and you, t at Arturo, me and you are good friends. I wouldn't call us friends. I'd say good friends. And, um, you know, from my standpoint, it's like you bring people around you and you learn from them and they learn from you. And I think part of coaching and re being a leader is just taking tidbits from people that, um, you know, teach you, uh, that bring in different plays you can call in your playbook as you grow. And right. And so, Rob, you're a sports guy. I think a lot of what I do is analogy, is sports analogies, but it's like building a successful sports franchise, right? You got to have the proper coaching. You may be able to call play, but someone may see a play that you weren't able, someone calls an audible that you didn't see. You have to have coaches around you that may see that before you do. And that's kind of um, my methodology, Arturo, is just bringing, bringing talent. And in Moby, when you were in Vegas with me at CES um, with the team, that was one of the best teams that I've built. Um, great people it's energy you have to energy fuels me right and that's the key and so I did the say I brought some of that Moby talent over to Philo but at the same time we went out and brought new people as well Our, I never worked with Aristotle but I knew his energy 
and his uh, and his hunger would really fire me up, and it has. And he never worked in technology before. Um, Nicole Cosby, our chief of data compliance, she was running Publicis. I met her negotiating legal, and so bringing her on here, we just built a relationship, and I knew she had something special to drive this organization. And if you look around our Philo, you'll see a lot of special talent that allows us to be who we are, but it's, it's energy. Energy fuels me. That's, I think that's the best way to describe it. Awesome. And, and Chad, so today's topic is leading by example. And I'm curious to dig into your mindset of how you lead yourself, because to be a great leader of others, you need to be self-driven and be someone with a growth mindset who always wants to get better. So how are you pushing yourself to always get better so that you can better lead? I think, I mean, for me, it's, I, I know what's going on around me, right? And I'm not, the, I'm not an ivory tower type of leader. I mean, I'm going to sit in a room and say, do this, do that. I actually will do whatever, you know, I always say, and Arturo and I talk about this, but I'll do what the janitor would do. I have no problem doing that, right? So I, you know, I built this ground up with the team, but I did it ground up, right? And I, so every which way, I know what needs to get done. And um, I think being a great leader is being a player, and a coach, which is like, you know, when you look at the great, I think a lot of the great coaches, you, they also played and understand they had a different vision. Um, and for me, I think that I can play the game and coach the game properly. And there's nothing that I won't do that my team, that I would ask my team to do. And, I, and I'm heads down kind of guy. There's always competitors, guys, but I'm heads down doing what I think we need to do. And that's, that's how we win, I think. And so we don't worry about outside factors we just worry about hustling and working hard and um you know getting to the finish line and so i think i have i'm i would say that if you ask people about me is that i'm a loyal persistent um leader and i will uh do what i ask other people to do and that i always i think ethically i always stand by the right morals and ethics and that's why people like to work for me you know i would i would i would think that's what you would hear from people that's what so, you'll hear from me for sure yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think everything that you just mentioned to me is really encompasses and describes what, what I would, what I would say is, is a cu cultural impact, somebody who's driving culture in the space. What do you guys t tell me a little bit about, um, Philo, the mission and what that culture feels like right now, um, within the company, it's a new company in a totally new space and not working in offices. Great. You ask great questions. But uh, so we have, a, we have a motto. It's all in, all out, all together. So we were in, a, we were in my lake house in Wisconsin. We just raised a little bit of money um, and we're all together in the room. We're like what, you know, you see at other organizations, Arturo, you know, Rob, you've probably seen your careers. Like there's things you really liked, there's things you really didn't like. So when we started Philo, I've seen a lot of things that I liked and a lot of things I didn't like. So now that it was a company that I founded, I got to really establish the core culture that we wanted. And so it's about, you know, being together and working together. And so we, we said all in all out all together. So we're going to live and breathe that. And so that's the culture we work on, you know, in terms of coronavirus, I'll be honest with you, every, I think, you know, Arturo, we were just talking earlier about um, the restaurant industry. And even when we were, we raised this capital, we hired a really good team, we're on this run and, and then coronavirus hits and we're like, Oh shit, what's going to happen here? You know, are we, are we gonna are we gonna have that one year like nine month run and we're gonna have to we call it a quiz because we just didn't know the future and then um, I've never worked a day in my life in at home. I mean, Arturo, you know me well. I traveled all the time. I was always in different offices and I lived off of energy. So this was new to me and I think we really pivoted really well. Um, where the Zoom like doing this like we have tons of Zoom calls. And we have a good working methodology. We're more productive, actually, from home than we were at the offices, right? And uh, so, you know, the fact that cannabis was deemed an essential was, was great, right, for, for our business. So um, that kind of gave us the boost we needed for the morale um, when we were in this situation. But um, I feel that now you have to do a challenge to communicate more. You can't really fly under the radar when you're working from home. You have to, if, if people don't hear from you, it's pretty easy to tell that, didn't hear from you and there's no productivity when you're working together. So I would say we became more productive. Our culture is strong because it, it enforces the fact that you have to engage more via Zoom versus when you're in an office 
um, it's, it may be harder um, when you're working from New York or Chicago. Now it doesn't matter because you have to be on Zooms, right? So right. I feel like from that perspective, it's worked out really well for us. And, you know, our culture is strong, but as you get bigger, you have to st stay focused on how do you create engagement. So now that's the next challenge that we're focused on is like, we used to be able to go out to dinners and do offsites and stuff like that. Now it was like the new norm. What do you do? And so these are things that uh, we are doing, we're figuring out and, it's, and just making sure that we don't lose sight of growing. Um, I don't want to be that CEO that is that big guy, big woman or man that's at a big company that loses sight of how they got there. So I think my methodology is keep it as we grow, keep it uh, consistent, you know? So Chad, as part of getting a good culture and growing is personal development, whether that's training the people who are working with you or also getting them to level up themselves, including yourself, sort of how do you put personal development for your team in the ethos of what you guys do? I think, you know, what, that's a great question. So my, my C-level team, just to give you guys some context for the listeners, is pretty talented, right? So Nicole, like I said, chief data compliance, head attorney for Bad Boy Records, then went to AOL, then went to Publicis, came here. Jeff Ragavan, my chief commercial officer, sold Buddy Media for $745 million to Salesforce, right? Aristotle, 30-year-old guy that sold his company to Marcus Simonis. My CFO was a Chicago guy. Um, sold Q, um, Q Discovery and Bucket Feet was a part of that. Um, Eric Shani, my co-founder, sold a company called Contera to Moby where we met. Um, Conrad Lisco, I think Arturo, you met him before, but he was the CMO of Moby, I mean, the head of market at Moby. But um, what I'm getting at is each one of these people, champ, I have to be my best self because it's not like I'm managing some, you know, junior level uh, leaders. So I have to really just be cognizant of, how I approach each person, everyone has different personalities. So I think that, you know, no one, I, I'll say this and I, I can't say a name, but you, you, I've seen someone just come into a company and bring a book and said, this book, this book makes me successful. I, we have to follow all this, what this book says. And I, again, I think great coaches can never just follow someone's other coaches methodology. You have to bring in your own, you have to bring in your own day-to-day -day play calling and be able to call audibles. And so, like I said, every, every time I deal with a situation, I bring a different uh, approach. And if I make a mistake, which I do, everyone does, I have to, I sit in my office and I, uh, and I think about how I can uh, do it differently. And um, I have a board that is a very sophisticated, great board. And they challenge me. And they always, Arturo knows me, like, I could get frustrated and I may get frustrated, but I will after I may challenge them, but then I'll go home and think about it. And I can apologize and say, you know what? I I was frustrated and not, I took the night to think about it and calm down. And you were, you were right. Right. So I, I think that I, I may be tough, but I also couldn't come back and say I was wrong. And I think that's a leader needs to be able to do that um, at all times. Awesome. So you just, by the way, so you're, I, so I've been on the outside kind of looking in again, as you guys have been forming this team. I mean, a lot of these guys I've known from, uh, I've just known their, their careers. Some I've known through you. Um, it is an all-star cast. I mean, it really is like a, a list of heavy hitters. So, and one of the things that people really don't talk about in, in leadership is the idea that that recruitment is such an important piece of the repertoire of great leaders you have to be a great recruiter in my opinion to be considered a, a truly strong strong leader because it's the team that's going to ultimately drive you to success so so recruitment for me is like you, you have to have confidence as an individual you have to have confidence to bring people on the team that potentially could be bigger stronger faster than you right you also yeah. have to have a resume that people will look at and say, well, this individual has been successful in his life. And I think that you have to also be able to paint a vision, a picture of like where we're going and to be able to articulate all those things. Do you, I mean, do you have a particular recruitment strategy to be, I mean, tell us how you got all these people to jump on. I think recruit, you know, I'm gonna, both of you guys, Rob, I'm guessing you understand, you're a great recruiter and understand recruiting and Tara, I've seen you recruit excellent talent um, and building an icon of what you've done in your past. So uh, it's the same thing, right? It's like when you, when I recruit, I'm always thinking about 
how do we get to the finish line, right? If everyone has a different goal. You're a football team, you want to be the Super Bowl. You're a basketball team, you want to win the NBA Finals. Companies want to have an exit or a great opportunity for all their employees. And so how do you get there? And what, how do you, you know, you want to get there sooner than later, right? When you build a team and you bring on great talent, it's like the goal is to do it, cut five years off of the time to win. And so everybody I bring is back to the cultural side. Like if you look at our board, I'll just name some names like Mitch Khan. I met Mitch at a Canaccord conference. So it was back to our networking. It's like when we can actually network. I got introduced to him by Clive Sirkin, who's on my board, who's a Chicago guy, who's the CMO of Kimberly Clark and Kellogg's. Introduced me to Mitch, who's, uh, for people that don't know, he's a CEO of Grassroots, who just sold to uh, Curly for about a billion dollars. And, um, and just bringing him on, we connected. I spent four or five months just recruiting him to be on the board, educating him about what we're doing and earning his trust. And um, Katie Ford, our chair, who you know, who's on our board, she's phenomenal. She was my client. Rob, she was running a uh, spark in Chicago as the president and uh, we hit it off and she came to work with me at a Moby. And uh, when I started this, she was the first person I told. And she's like, I want to be in, I want to be a part of this. So she joined the board, not knowing this was going to be successful or not just blind belief, I think in our, me and our relationship. And so um, the board is extended. We got Katie, Clive, Mitch, Christy Hafner just joined, who was, um, you know, a legend in the, all, all different areas. And uh, we met through a mutual friend and um, I spent a lot of time just getting, you know, getting to know her and her getting to know us and what Philo was trying to do in our vision. But um, across the board, we have a lot of great people. Lauren Gertner, who they call the godfather of cannabis, who started Tokyo Smokes in Toronto and they sold it for quite a bit of capital to Kronos. Jason Klarich, who's our lead investor with Jason Wild, um, who's on our board. Um, excellent. Uh, as well. And uh, we just added another person, Craig Robinson, to the board. But the board, again, it's it's challenging the team to do better. And so um, I recruit really well, I think. I, I recruit based off of how they fit into the company and not just their backgrounds, but their culture. A, a board is like um, my good friend from, I don't know if, if Tara, you ever met him, but Asaf, who was the founder of Kintera, he always said, you're as good as your last dinner right? When you're in board meetings and I want to have a board, I just, in general, I want to have a board that was, uh, um, that you enjoyed having dinner with. So whether it's your last dinner or not, you, every dinner you go, it's, it's enjoyable. And, uh, our boards like that, you feel like you're going into your family and that's, what's cool about it. So Chad, one thing that I love about talking with you is I can feel your energy. It's transferable. And, uh, we recently had Carrie on the podcast, Carrie Luxum, talking about positive energy. And I just want to recognize that in you because I can feel this energy from you. But another thing that I'm noticing about you is vision and thinking big. And for me, this is something that just this week, I changed my word of the year to vision. It used to be give, but right now vision is more important. And I know great leaders are great at selling a vision. And I'm curious on your end, what you do to sell a vision, both for yourself and for others, because I think certainly for leaders, we need to believe it ourselves first, and then we can sell it on others. Well, I can tell you one thing, I'm very confident in myself. Um, so I believe always that like, you know, i it's not about being better than anybody else. It's being the best I can be. And so I always just challenge myself always as a leader, just to be, you know, I'm competitive with myself. I always, I learn when you're younger, you're immature. You're like, I got to be better than this or that. When you're older, it's like, you got to be better than yourself is, and keep pushing yourself. Um, but as a, but as a visionary visions are what raise capital, like Arturo with Edie's like great vision. And it's become a reality. And I, I just looking at him, I knew if he starts something, cause I've known him for a while, He'll work his ass off to do it. I'm the same way. You got to bring substance to a vision, right? I start off with the vision. I raise a lot of capital for the vision. Then you, once the vision and the excitement around the vision is there, you have to have substance to the vision. And so that's where we're back to like, I was able to raise a lot of capital because I brought a great team. I had a vision. We knew we would execute. When people give you capital, they want to make sure that if they give you capital, that they're the right team to execute on that vision because everything you invest in is a vision. And so, um, Vision is very important. You have to have a strong vision and you have to be accepting that the vision may have pivots, but you can still stay within the vision, but you may have to have a pivot in the vision, right? And so um, 
I, I had a vision. It, it definitely extended to more than I could have expected, which is amazing. Um, not many, I don't think a lot of people can say that. And I, I, we've been lucky. Um, but I think you have to have a vision and believe in, especially in these times, Rob, because it's depressing times in certain areas. So you, you, you have to be stronger mentally than ever. If you are going to set out to start an EDs or start a podcast or start something, you have to be vulnerable, but unbreakable. So when you have those vulnerable moments, you look at yourself and say, step the fuck up and let's go keep going, you know? Love it. So I have uh, I think we have time for maybe per perhaps one more question, but I, so, you know, it, in experiences that I've had uh, along the way over the last, you know, call it 20 some years of being in business, I, I've felt that I've, I've seen certain leaders that have been, that hold back a little bit. They hold back for the fear that they may lose a particular employee. Um, and, and they try to, they try to, in a very selfish way, try to close down doors because they don't, they don't want to see that teammate leave because of the strength or for whatever reason you have an all-star team. I mean, people that are insanely accomplished in, in different parts of their uh, past career. How do you, how do you keep them engaged? And, and what would you say to, to some of those leaders that selfishly sometimes roadblock people's careers? I, I personally am not going to roadblock anybody's career. And again, like Arturo, if you look at, uh, you know, the people you met at CES, like all those people I've still talked to and I've and helped them get other opportunities um, and it may not be with me, but it, you know, if you have good people, you got to let them go. And I've seen, I'll go to you, but look at Scott Horwich. He's yeah. worked for you at yeah. underground, right? Yeah. He's, he came to Moby and he's now started his own company, but it's like, you want to let people, um, there's a certain point where you hope they stay with you as long as you can to help you build it. But if they say, you know what, I've done my piece and I can't, I can't help you out anymore. And I want to start something I want to go start something new or do something else. Like you have to let them be right. And um, I think that a great leader uh, hopefully gets to retain. I, I look at my retention of talent and I haven't had any struggles with retention in my career. And that's because I'm very transparent. I think if you, uh, if you want people to stay with you, you got to be transparent. If they don't know why they're staying, they don't know what they're, they're here for and what the opportunity, then there's a good shot they'll leave. Right. And so when transparency goes out the door, I think you lose retention. So it's just making sure that I'm transparent with people and they're transparent with me. If someone were to, I'm a loyal person, so I'll, I'll leave it like this, but if someone were to um, catch me off guard and say, uh, and I've been great to them, loyal to them, and uh, they said, you know, I'm leaving you tomorrow to go to your, uh, to the, your competition, then I wouldn't be so happy, right? It's just, it's right. just you got, it has to, everything has to be done. If I'm transparent with you, I expect transparency back to me. And if you are transparent back to me, I will, I will help you. Like I will make sure whatever you do that I will help you be successful. So it's just about, it's back, comes back down to etiquette and ethics. Be, be, do right um, by me, I'll do right by you. And I think that's the methodology that I, I've always um, lived by and it served me to, you know, good to this point. One of the things that I've really enjoyed about this conversation is Arturo, when I look at the episodes that we've recorded so far on a micro basis, from EQ to energy to grit to all of these different things. I see so much of it in Chad, in what he's speaking and success leaves so many breadcrumbs along the way. And so often we have narratives that we, we talk about over and over again on this show. But for me, when I hear it, it makes me feel good because it reaffirms the tenets of leadership that I know are so important. Do you agree, Arturo? A hundred percent. And I, I think that one of the, one of the episodes and at length, we've discussed that, you know, at least from my, my perspective, where I think we share this perspective that for me, when it's all said and done, that my success won't be measured in, in monetary, it won't be measured in anything other than the legacy that I left behind in human capital, the people that I've seen succeed, succeed over the years because of the work that we've done either together or the work that they put in or the work that I put in to put them in that spot. And so that that's, you know, a hundred percent agree. And that's why I was super excited to have Chad on, uh, on the show, because it, like I said, it's, there's been a lot of respect for many years there, but um, seeing firsthand how um, he engaged with his team, there was so many different attributes of, of true leadership that I saw, saw there. But, you know, I think Chad is, is going to be one of those people too, that, that his, his, le his legacy already speaks for itself. He's already, I've already seen people that have worked, for Chad, with Chad, 
um, that may not be with uh, the current team um, that have all gone on to be really successful in whatever they've done. Yeah, I would say lifelong relationships. Kim Perello is my old boss, you met her, Tara, but she, she always said lifelong relationships. And I think it's very true. Um, that is, Tara, I love what you just said too and um, about human capital. I think, you know, people are like, oh, this person, you're, you're, you, at the end of the day, you're trying to make everyone liquid and make money for everybody. But at the end of the day, that's not necessarily like, it's, it's the trophy, but it's not what drives you. What drives you is um, having fun day to day. When you lose, when you lose fun and it happened to me, like Selena, I, how I started Philo is, I'll leave it at this, but I sit at my table and I'm like, you know, I'm kind of miserable, um, you know, doing, being in a large corporation now. And that's just me. And she's like, uh, I was like, should I go do another, you know, run another company or start uh, this cannabis company? She's like, you, I want you to be happy. So, you know, it's a huge risk. I was doing very well for myself. She's like, but we can, we'll figure it out. Just go do it. I think Arturo, you have that support at home, Rob. I don't know you personally, but I know Arturo's wife. And so it's just making sure that you have like support and she pushed me. She's like, just go fucking do it. And that's really without, without her saying that I wouldn't have done it because I have a family. And so you just have to, um, there's just like a back to, there's so many factors of how you get somewhere that you just, it takes, you can't give it in 40 minute podcast, but um, I like the human capital thing you said at the end of the day. I think that's the most important thing of what drives me. So we like to end every episode with an action item or a takeaway. And Arturo, I'll let you lead so that Chad can see how we get down with this. Yeah, I mean, I think my action item is that um, is, is today's a great example of, of all the little micro um, pieces that I think that we've left along the way with, with our podcast. And, and, you know, looking at, you know, obviously people don't know, some people may know Chad, they may not know Chad, but um, understanding that leadership dive into the, this concept that it's, it is not, it's not consisting of one thing. It's consisting of a lot of little things that really make uh, leaders um, stand out. And um, I think, you know, so, so looking at that entire body of work, but also again, understanding that, that we have responsibilities to our investors and to the people that have jumped on board that have said, I'm going to follow you and I'm going to follow your vision. So um, you know, just, I think bringing that awareness out, um, not necessarily an action item. I think it's just more about the action item would just be to, to think about it and consider that, that there's responsibilities and there are people along the way that we were there to serve. And Chad, do you have an action item or takeaway from this conversation? No, I, I love it. I love your guys' style of this uh, podcast. I think I should keep it up. I think it challenges people like, you know, free flowing brings out, you know, the actual rawness of a story. So I personally uh, have enjoyed this. I just see you guys keep going and bringing on good stories because, um, you know, Rob, I've heard great things about you and uh, through our tarot. And so I know you're, you've are you hustled your way to be very successful. And I've gotten to see, I would, you know, I've always looked up to our tarot as well. So I think, you know, I've been around him for 10 years, seen his hustle. So just keep, like we said, just keep inspiring people to hustle and, you know, um, try to follow their vision, like you said, Rob, earlier, just focus on your vision. If you have a vision, try to make it a reality. But it's not, there's no shortcuts to that. Oh, I love that. And for me, my takeaway, Chad, is actually something that you said that resonates so much with me that's in my DNA. You have to be better than yourself. That's the only one. Anytime someone says, who's your competition? I'm my own competition because we're the ones who are the architects of our worlds and we can create anything we want. So we've always got to be getting better, better, better at all times. And Chad really enjoyed this conversation with you. Where can everybody connect with you? I'm just uh, Chad at hellofilo.com. Pretty easy. And Arturo, where can everybody connect with you? Yes. Best place is going to be on LinkedIn. Arturo Gomez, LinkedIn. And you can hit me up on LinkedIn or Instagram at Rob Cressy.